It's the start of a brand new year, and many folks set a New Year's resolution of getting more organized. If putting some order to your Canva chaos is one of your own resolutions for this year, I want to give you a bit of a kickstart by providing an overview of a framework you can use to get started. When I teach how to get organized in my Clean Up My Canva course, I teach two different methods. First is the tackle the mess approach, which is for those folks who are ready to organize all of their existing designs and images and to create an intuitive Canva organization system. And depending on how many designs and images you have in your account, this could be a potentially time-consuming project, though still very worthwhile. And if you have the bandwidth to do this, it is the approach that I definitely recommend. The second option is the start fresh method. One of the biggest reasons that folks who know they need to get organized in Canva and who want to get organized but still haven't done it is because they have an absolutely overwhelming backlog of designs and images. So this is the option for those Canva users who feel like their account is an organizational pit of despair and who have zero energy to organize it, but who want to be organized going forward. What I want to do in this video is to give you a quick overview of the tackle the mess approach, because since you're watching this training today, that likely means you already have a hot mess account that you would like to impose some order on. So here are the steps I would suggest you follow. The first step is focused on deleting and archiving your unneeded Canva designs and images. If you were organizing piles of paper in an office or a filing cabinet, you would start by disposing of the papers that you no longer need. You would also archive into long-term storage the documents that you may need for reference, but that you're no longer actively using. The same process applies for your digital content, including your Canva designs. So I'd recommend you take a stroll down Canva memory lane and review all of the designs in your Canva account delete any of the designs that you know you don't need. So for example, you may have copies of the templates you never ended up using, duplicates of designs you thought you would need but didn't, designs that are super outdated that you know you won't need, and so on. For those of you who are afraid to let go of any designs, in case you might need it in the future, I would encourage you to create an archive folder and then move all of those but what if I need it down the road designs into that folder. If you haven't needed to access those archive designs in the next year, chances are good that you will feel safer doing a purge of them down the road. Next up is to do a review of what's left in your Canva account after you've finished deleting and archiving and to update your naming conventions. If you're like most Canva users, you probably have a lot of designs named things like copy of template XYZ or design version two and design version three and version four, etc. Or you've labeled it with a really generic name like Instagram post without providing any further description about which Instagram post it is, should you wanna find it later. It's important to name your files in a descriptive manner so that you can easily tell at a glance what all of your designs are from the outside. And also so you can more easily search for your designs using the Canvas search bar. Your third step is going to be to plan and create your folders. Write down a list of all the categories and subcategories you think you'll need to organize your designs, your images, and your video. There is no one size fits all solution about how to break down your folders within Canva. Some of you will only need a small handful of folders. Others will need a really robust filing system. As an example, my own Canva account is broken down into multiple folders, as you can see here, and then those primary folders are further broken down into subfolders as needed. Once you have your initial list of folders, you can start actually creating your custom folders and subfolders in order to begin building your own Canva filing cabinet. Or you may find it makes more sense to create your folders as you go through the category creation process, whatever feels most natural for you. Once you've got your folders set up so that your designs and images all have homes, you can use the batch organizing technique that I talked about earlier in order to begin moving all of your files into your new folders. And your final step will be to maintain your organization. Once you finish getting through the first four steps of this process, your organization system should be in good shape, but even the best system will fall apart if you don't maintain your Canva account. You can create a recurring task on your calendar or your project management tool of choice to do your Canva organization on a weekly or bi-weekly or even a monthly basis. And I'd also recommend a periodic deep clean 
of your Canva account to review the content of your folders and to delete and archive again as needed. This doesn't need to be very often, but this will also give you an opportunity to reassess your folder system and whether it's still working for you. If you're feeling inspired to tackle your own Canva clutter, I have a free guide that you may want to check out. The Canva organization roadmap will essentially walk through the framework from this tutorial in a format that you can more easily reference while you're tackling your own Canva organization. If you haven't yet upgraded to Canva Pro, I encourage you to give it a try. And you can do a 45 day free Canva Pro trial by going to brendacadman.com forward slash Canva.